Hello everybody, Kane here and welcome to another video of Art of Conquest. In this one we're gonna talk about hero guides in terms of Avalon and Elana. The reason why to cover them both is there is not really that much info to go around both of these heroes so we might as well just connect them together. So first things first, Avalon, what should you put on him? So. The current formation that I have is I am running Lich, so I don't need any particular or necessary, I suppose, sets apart from this Clash of Fate, which grants protective shield to nearby allies that blocks one instance of incoming damage per unit greater than 20% of its max HP. So in some cases, that one proc might actually um, be very huge, like from 100 to 0. And if you uh, maybe block it, I mean, it could be or seem a lot. So that is why I kind of choose it on him. And he is in the middle of my burst side heroes. So uh, I do like this particular set to have on quite a few generals. Aside uh, of that, uh, the other equipment, as you can see, I have the Tectonic Great Axe, damage mitigation 20%, I have magic resistance 30%, and I have another one, uh, Heart of Protection. After the battle begins, hero damage taken is reduced by 20% for 10 seconds. It does not stack. I don't think that there is another particular trinket which would grant any sort of, I guess, uh, resistances. I mean, I tried checking, but there is like maybe this, uh, a shield every 10 seconds, boost damage mitigation. I mean, I could perhaps use this, but I really don't know. I think in the first 10 seconds, sometimes he's able to receive a ton of damage. So I might as well just try and block it as well. That That is like the sort of thought that I had. Now, do keep in mind, I don't run this build for events. And he's one of the stronger heroes for timed events. Really depends which event, really depends what you require, who you're facing against. But essentially, Avalon is now more used for events because the... I suppose archers do a ton more damage, like snipers and stuff like that. So I think I have this on set 3. Yeah, so I use something like this for the event. So we have Heaven's Edge, start battle with higher morale. Uh, we have 15% bonus damage to nearby friendly ranged units, uh, or troops rather, and we have the Warhorn plus one which is kind of important and for events we usually tend to go the tempering charm the reason for that is this tempering charm activates at the very beginning and it grants sort of like an area fire type damage which even dead eyes who hit one target usually start to hit a lot more and they can clear like an archer squad in a split second or less uh, opposed to damaging one or two units and it's still taking like a few seconds to kill them so aside from that this is actually one of the better four events to use i'm not sure if all of them necessarily but essentially tempering charm is one of the like top few artifacts that people use on avalon if not the best uh, aside from that prism you actually use a buffing prism on him i am not sure uh like if this is the best uh for me personally this particular uh hero dies uh i suppose quick or not not quick but one of the first few to die if i face burst versus burst so since i don't have any specific huge uh artifact on him i do believe this procs on many other heroes uh, prior to him dying, I mean, I just put one of the weaker artifacts and, or rather, prisms. And if he dies, he actually dies. I mean, that's not really up to me. I even gave him a ton of stuff to do that. In the next few days, I'm gonna level him to 68 as well. So there's gonna be about 80% more uh, HP stats, maybe 88, maybe 89. So he's gonna be probably close to 40 million, which maybe gonna make him quite a bit more tankier aside from that the abilities that you should level 
So since I'm not running human uh, at the moment, I have Warhorn at level 9, 120% uh, attack speed and damage dealt for 35. So I had swapped his stuff to get pot 70 for events. Probably I'm going to swap him back uh, after next week on some other and test another pot 70 hero for a little bit. But that depends, because usually I do like one week, I test um, a pot 70 hero for PvP. I remove that, I put on Avalon, so I will need to do that for a while. And then I go back to testing another hero. That is a sort of a way I am gathering some information. If I would do that almost every week, I would be wasting thousands of Lenari per month, which I don't really want to do. So, uh, in terms of abilities of human race, uh, or rather not being human race, you go Warhorn Max, you go Arden Aura Max, and of course you go Natural Leader. Now, I'm not sure if this one particular thing actually upgrades the hero HP, right? Because uh, it says humanoid units. Uh, sometimes humanoid can actually refer to only the army. I mean, I personally didn't test this ever. But I might as well just have it just in case. I mean, again, I have no clear idea. But if he's not really uh, used in human race, I might really just have this just in case. And aside from that, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's Warhorn and I guess this. Aside from that, we have the potential. The way you want to make Avalon for events is you want the Warhorn uh, activated at pot 50 and then you want the natural leader because what it does is uh, he is going to deploy additional two troops meaning if his basic is two additional two makes it a total of four. So you're going to have four units being buffed by tempering charm as well as this particular thing which is going to give 140% attack speed as well as 35% or rather 40% more damage in the PvE build, which is pretty friggin' huge. Now also the command increases the bonuses. I think uh, he's close to 300 in the other build. I'm not sure, but yeah, it does increase quite a bit. So that is what I kind of am running on Avalon. Um... I mean, this is one of the builds that I want to keep my buffers alive since, again, not a lot of research, not a lot of breakthroughs. And this sort of a way kind of grants them quite a bit more resistances alongside the armory to make them survive. Now, if a hero doesn't die, you're going to keep his buffs alive. You're going to keep uh, the artifact buff alive. You're going to keep the prison buff alive. And if a trinket or weapon has a particular buffing one, I mean, if he doesn't survive, uh, that buff it, it can actually be useless. And personally, I value more the artifact, the prism, the abilities, etc. So I kind of want to keep uh, the hero alive as possible. So majority of these equipments will be similar throughout quite a few heroes. Not all of them, but pretty similar. So aside from that, we have Elana as well. Now, as you can see, I have a different build on Elana. The reason for that is currently I don't have another, uh, I suppose, Clash of Fate set, which grants a ton of stats. She actually loses like more than 20 or 30 command on that other set, and she's touching heroes, which uh, already are touched by another general with Clash of Fate set. So... I might as well just have a lot more command for the main ability of her, which is the magic resistance. Probably one of the most crucial auras on the field that if it's gone, the enemy mages can just devastate your field in a matter of a few seconds. So how can you avoid that? To avoid that, you require to equip her with this particular artifact, which is called Salantris. And you want to upgrade her to 2 star. Hero becomes invulnerable for 10 seconds when health is below 20%. The thing about this is, until she receives damage or she's gonna be focused or targeted, she is safe. And when she's targeted, this procs and boom, 10 seconds invincible. 
that is a lot of time for you to be able to do something or the enemy uh, also might be casting and trying to kill her and wasting abilities. I mean, there are a lot of nuances which can happen. It's really, really hard to say, but essentially this is the best thing that you can actually do. Aside from that, I like to keep uh, friendly dragons have mitigation on her as well. The reason for that, if it's burst versus burst, she's far away. If it's burst versus stall, the dragon is far away regardless. So you have a buff which is not going to suffer in like majority of the cases or wouldn't really suffer um, on a hero very far away being protected by a lot of stuff. And the next trinket is, of course, magic resistance plus one. For the prism, for like 90 to 95% of the times, you want to have this as draconic defiance. This prism saves your dragon from being instantly one-shotted. And yes, I do mean instantly one-shotted. Like the thing is, if you have this buff and if you upgrade it more than say tier 8 to like tier, tier 10, tier 9, uh, this 14 seconds means that the enemy Tisafin or archers or whatever will be hitting your dragon pretty much like they're hitting Solaris. Like, not always. It really depends on your other buffs, your armory resistances, all that kind of stuff. As well as if your dragon is awakened 20 in the new thing or new feature they released. So yeah, that is also dependent. But if this ability procs and you have it, and you have a proper dragon with some abilities, some other stuff which I spoke about, the dragon is not gonna take any damage whatsoever. When this disappears, boom, instantly the dragon is gone. So you want to keep this particular ability on a hero that is able to survive a lot. So you have this Solantris and it's a very, very huge thing on her. I have a Clash of Fate buff on her from another general. I have a few ranged heal, uh, rather healers, and I think one hero with hero mastery around her as well. So she's being healed uh, quite a bit as well. And if she doesn't take huge amounts of damage and doesn't proc this, basically she's able to survive a very long time. So you want to keep decently ish important things on her and if the enemy wastes a ton to kill her that's uh, things that are not going to be used on your main army or your main hero so i usually go at it like that so i still can level her two times and that will be over 40 million hp which is going to be pretty friggin decent because majority of the time she was like friggin 20 million hp Aside from that, I have potential 70 on her for a while. The less magic damage that my field takes is pretty much the damage that is avoided or I would not have to heal. Now, mages are probably one of the top DPSers currently in the game still. Yes, the archers are freaking like doing a ton of damage for people who wail out in those features. But the mages actually have the ability to destroy a ton of the army. And their damage is not actually showing in the data logs. Yes, I do mean it doesn't show in data logs. For some odd reason, the archers do 300 billion damage. But majority of the side is actually killed by the mages. And the mages have like 10 billion. So I'm not sure what the hell is that calculation. Maybe the archer's damage is added onto the enemy, but then it's resisted. While the mages have a lot less attack, but can land a lot more damage as it's a lot less resisted. I'm not really sure how the data logs work right now, but they're actually fake or do seem fake and they don't show the exact thing in the fight. So be aware that also data logs suck ass. So yeah. So aside from that, I build her as uh, a supportive type hero as possible with a lot of stuff, so enemy has a lot of value to remove her from my field, but if that enemy wastes a ton of stuff to remove her, that's a ton of stuff that is not being focused on my core heroes. So yeah, that is something that I kind of went for. 
Uh, in terms of anything else, you don't really use her for anything else on the field. The only other thing that I do on her as well is I have, I think, Command 6 on the um, Command Mastery, that 20% attack, 20% DPS. I mean, the majority of the time, my Alana survives for a huge amount of time, like minimum 40 to 50 seconds, like 90% plus of the time. So she's one of the heroes that actually has the capability to survive long. I mean, it might be different from person to person, but for me, she's like one of the better, um, I suppose, uh, buff carriers in the game. But yeah, that's pretty much it for those two heroes. I think I covered what they're able to do, um, what I place on them, how I place them, and etc. However, I didn't say which events Avalon is used. Now it really depends and events can actually change. You probably can use Avalon for Nightfire with the more DPS buzz with Pot 70. Uh, or of course you're going to use him. You can use Avalon for... Um, I think you use him for Pinnacle as well. And I think there are at the very least a couple more events which would value his um, attack speed. So I think the... Uh, I'm not sure it's uh, an event every three weeks, not Purify, not Dark Dimension, but any of the other rotating events like Ocean Olympiad, Silver Wing Guard, and all the others. So you want to use him on that as well. And I think there is even one or two more events. So Avalon is pretty much like the top dog currently in events if you have very decked out archers. So yeah, I think now I covered everything. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, do hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. As well as if you would wish to support me more than just watching my videos, I have made a Patreon page where you would be able to do just that. Then in return, I would be able to help you out more individually in terms of events, PvP, formations, and stuff like that. As well as I would like to thank all of my patrons for the support. I really, really appreciate it for your subscriptions. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe out there.